if you're unfamiliar with sawmills, this baby behind me is a beast. It's got a 54 inch throat. They can take a big log. You can take one bigger if you just nibble the edges down. And it's 44 foot, it'll cut 44 foot long. This mill is my friend. It makes our life easy. We can cut big timbers and we don't have to pay just through the nose. Exorbitant cost because we got control of that. So that makes it nice for us, makes it nice for our clients. But it has not always been the case. So about five years ago, uh, maybe even six or seven, the supplier up and quit on us. Called me up a Saturday night and we had been kind of putting some pressure on to get our timbers faster. And I thought, okay, well, Monday is gonna roll around and we'll make peace and things are gonna roll on. Nope, not to me. It was done. And we had a job in mid stride. We're like, what are we gonna do? We could put in an order with someone else and kind of be held hostage, pay higher prices, longer lead time, or we could get a mill. Well, if I had known what I know now about what it takes to make all this work, I don't know that we would have a meal here. But, you know, ignorance is bliss, and we charge on. We got a meal, we got some logs. Whew, boy, did we suffer. I hated that meal. And if it, was, if it was up to me, I don't know if we'd have it here. But we got great guys running this. They've perfected all the mechanics and how logs roll and even something that's not even visible to the observer, the bigger part of the mill is how do you handle the material? What do you do with the sawdust? Where do all these spare pieces go? How, how does all this material handling work? It's kind of the holy grail of this, aside from you have to buy top, top quality logs. For what we do, if you got a bad log and you need to put all this work into the log and <laughs> find some big flaws, your productivity is in the toilet. So I'm gonna go into a little bit of a history on what sawmills used to be. Before sawmills, settlers, pioneers, builders of old would take a log and they would put the center of the log, bam, in the middle of the beam, box tart, and they would take a hatchet or an ax and they would chip away at the side of the log, four sides, and things were tended to be more square. And that was what they built from. When they got saws and whatnot, they would put the logs on big saw horses and they'd have a, a pull saw, one guy down below. And they would run down there. I mean, you can imagine that would be a fun job, right? So, and one other way they would split logs back in the day, it sounds a little bit weird, but they'd just drive wedges down the, down the log and pop, they'd pop the log in half and we have thought about wedges. We tried wedges back when we had this little mill that was a pain in the arse. Or we could get these big logs that the mill simply couldn't handle. It only had a 27 inch throat as opposed to this 54 inch throat, my friend here. And we had to split these big logs. The wedges kind of failed. We couldn't get them to work. It was just way faster to take a six foot chainsaw and just saw that whole thing in half. Then you had something that you could work with. So the value of the log for us at that point wasn't so hot because it took so much labor to break down. But now we pay top buck for big logs, high quality, we get some beautiful timbers out of these. So we talked about boxed heart logs, what they used to do back in the day when they were chopping timbers and whatnot. And with this big mill, we don't have to box heart the log if you can you can kind of see the markings here. All these beams are designed to get out of the center of the tree. So you have free of heart timbers. And you can do that when you have big logs. Small logs, not so easy. But back in the day, they didn't have much choice. You just took off the rounded edges and called it good. Or you use the, the manual sawmill. And sawmills evolved from this. One guy on top, one guy on the bottom with a woof, 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 woof. They evolved from that. The first mills were water powered and they had a vertical blade that copied what the guys had been doing. Zoop, 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 zoop. Up and down, up and down, and the, the water would power that mill. And then it moved from 
From there, it moved to steam powered and they got the, the big circle saw. And then of course the band saw, which is what you see here. And some mills will have a, a carriage where the log sits on and the blade is stationary. That's some of the earlier sawmills. And the carriage runs with the log and whew, takes off a slab. They're typically the big circle saw, circle saws. This here, the band mill, very effective, a thin kerf, not a ton of sawdust, and the blade just continually moves. And in this case, you can see the log is stationary. The mill runs down the log. If you are in the area or want to travel and have an event here in the Northwest, you can come by for a tour, see the beast, get some good ideas, and we'll send you off with a hardcover book, The Art of Hybrid Timber Framing. Really, it drills down on how beams are gonna influence your space and make it feel for you, your family, your friends, anything you're doing within that space. Hardcover book, $20 our it costs. That's what you pay, one green $20 bill, and you leave with a planning guide, a workbook companion guide, and good ideas for the future. What could be finer? Come on by.